This keeps getting crazier for the San Antonio Spurs as they've made a couple of moves in the past week that have gone under the radar that are really positioning themselves in the Western Conference as a team that's going to be able to compete and stack up with the top teams in the West and they still have cap space. They're still scheming up some moves to bring in different players. We'll discuss those as any year with Victor Wembenyama on your roster is a season where you really need to Put a team around him to maybe not compete for a championship, but at least try to get some wins and build back up that culture with what they're doing with the San Antonio Spurs. So we're going to dive into the moves that went under the radar that they made that's helping build up this team. The things that they're planning on doing in the coming weeks with their extra cap space moving forward. And just dive into how they've done this, Jack, without giving up any of their real stockpile of draft capital and actually building upon it, you know, during this off season. So let's dive into the things that they've done. Basically news has come out. Obviously most people have seen it. The Sacramento Kings trade where they got to Marta Rose and well, and most people probably saw Harrison Barnes coming back to the Spurs. We'll break down how he impacts the team, but they also got a first round pick in that deal, which is pretty shocking to me. But Jack, how are you feeling about this Spurs roster right now? Because frankly, they are looking stacked with uh, the pieces that they have coming in as the team's making more and more sense around Victor Wembanyama. Yeah, I think the team, the team is keeping all their core guys. Obviously, they've added CP3 and Harrison Barnes and their new draft pick as well, too. I think those three guys are going to be tremendous value to the existing team because they've really kept the rest of the players intact that, that worked well together last year. Uh, and I think, honestly, we, we already talked a little bit about CP3 and Wemby in the last yeah. video. I think they're going to work really well together. Harrison Barnes is going to be another great piece. I think he's going to be able to provide some some great uh, scoring threats for both uh, both to help out Wemby and CP3. And it, I think the, they just fit together. So I'm, I'm really excited and optimistic for, for both of those pickups. Yeah. And here's the Burns was on a significant contract. And with all the cap rules and stuff, teams are dealing these guys away left, right, and center. So... But the Spurs lacked a lot of veteran players around Victor Wembanyama last season. You know, they had some wings. Obviously, Sochan, they got a Sochan. They had a Devin Vassell. They have some guys that obviously could play that wing forward position. But, you know, Harrison Barnes coming in, you know, at that spot is just going to be a nice addition to the group. I mean, 12.2 points per game, three rebounds, 1.2 assists. People might not remember. He was on those Warriors teams that were making those deep playoff runs. Shot 39% from the three-point line, so you get more spacing. And some de decent sort of, you know, defending. He did take a step back in recent seasons in terms of his on-ball defense. But if you're starting Vassell as well as Sochan, him coming off the bench, you know, as a reliable 3 and D player, is just going to be key. Again, we'll see how the roster is fully constructed as they move forward. As you mentioned, we already discussed uh, Chris Paul, you know, in previous vids. His stats aren't over. Over the moon by any stretch of the imagination but still a guy seven assists per night coming off the bench for the warriors last season his minutes were seriously taken aback but can space the floor and it's just going to be able to run some crazy pick and rolls with victor webanyama who we know in his rookie season 21 11 for four blocks per game this man is just on an absolute another level but you know they also have a guy that i think People are overlooking because people have all called this NBA draft, you know, kind of garbage, kind of stuff like that. But Stefan Castle is a dude that I don't think should be underestimated by any fans, by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. He's going to be able to slide in, whether it's, you know, starting over Chris Paul. I imagine Chris Paul is going to start, maybe not play a ton of minutes, but, you know, starting this game, Castle at the two. You know, he's out there, you know, sizable guard, can play a ton of defense, and his stats were really solid, you know, in college last year. Right into 11 points per game, not the craziest of three point shooters, but can get to the rim, can facilitate, and was on a winning culture. And it feels like the Spurs bringing in CP3, bringing in Harrison Barnes, who was on the Kings. Again, the Kings did improve when Harrison Barnes was there, right? But it was on those Mavericks that were teams that were solid, but obviously those winning Golden State Warriors squads. And now a guy that won a national championship in college different pieces they're bringing in some winners around victor webinyama and that's kind of something that you really need to develop a culture of winning especially when you have a guy that can take you to those heights in a in a victor webinyama there 100 percent, ben yeah I, I think like you said i feel like as well to harrison bards and cp3 are both gonna take a step up obviously they didn't even have terrible years last year but i think you're gonna see cp3's assists go up and you're gonna see harrison bards Depending on how many minutes he gets hit, I could see his scoring going up. And he's a great three-point shooter as well, too. So it's going to be huge in terms of spacing the floor for, for the, the Spurs. Yeah, and they're not done, Jack. They are not done. They have cap space to sort of toy around with, to play with. And there's a couple names that have already been linked to the San Antonio Spurs. And Trey Jones' brother, Tyus Jones, probably the more popular Jones uh, of the Jones brothers in the league, Tyus Jones, who 
was a monster for the Memphis Grizzlies a you know a season ago. Didn't have the craziest sort of year for the Washington Wizards in terms of you know eye recognition stuff because people were hyped about Tyus Jones the way he was able to fill in for John mm-hmm. Morant when he was dealing with injury suspensions and all those types of things. Right, Tyus Jones proved to himself, proved to the league that he can be a very if not the best point guard off the bench in the league or a solid quality starter. You know, Trey Jones is kind of a similar level, so maybe they'd be interested in uh, reuniting the brothers there. I mean, we can take a look at his stats in terms of what he's been able to to provide out there in these games. 12 points per game last season, three rebounds, seven assists, right? The the Spurs last year, they lacked those sort of facilitators to get Victor Wembanyama the basketball. And now, you know, obviously Trey Jones is solid, but bringing in Chris Paul, and if they bring in Tyus Jones as well, that's another kind of 28 years old, a vet in this league that shoots the basketball and can facilitate at a high level. He would be an absolute monster pickup. But there was one other name that was also linked, and that was Gary Trent Jr., who you and I know very well as Toronto Raptors fans, right? A bucket getter, a floor spacer, can get hot in a hurry in terms of uh, what he's able to provide out there on the court. You know, instant scoring off the bench or starting or whatever the heck he's doing. Average 14. His numbers did regress for the Raptors last season, who just had a absolute log jam at the shooting guard spot you know shot a 40 percent from the three-point line you know 38 percent from corner threes how are you feeling about these two potential options that have been linked to the san antonio spurs jack you know in terms of uh free agent acquisitions i mean i'm fairly optimistic about both i think yeah like on the gary trent side he definitely had cold streaks when he was on the raptors but when he's hot he's hot and i think he, he considering he can shoot another guy that can shoot around 40 percent from three that's going to help them space or even more i think they he can fit really well with Wemby, and they can play both harrison barnes and gary trent at times as well too so i i like gary trent and then tyus jones as well too that could be i don't know how the dynamic would work if they had both tyus jones and trey jones but i agree with you i think he became more underrated when he was on the wizards just off that off season but the season before when he's on memphis he was he was a killer and i think he has that potential to to bring that back to 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 the Spurs and be a threat off the bench. Yeah, they would have a lot of playmaking. CB3 trade yeah. and uh and Tyus Jones there. Might be a bit redundant, but I just mm-hmm. I feel like brothers always get united in the league. You have Cassidy. Yeah, they get a bonus. There as well. You know, you get the the what is it? Those uh the orange 2K15, you know, little perks. You play with Michael B. Jordan, you play with your Yeah, <laughs> the orange juice, yeah. Get the OJ connection. Aging myself yeah. here now, Jack. <laughs> those out here online but no it's a it's an interesting sort of dynamic because again you said it harrison bards and gary trent jones off the bench whoever it is they also have keldon johnson who i think people forget about was on yep. those uh to have some team usa moments people thought he might take a higher leap he didn't take that leap necessarily but he's still a very very solid score out there in the league still a young player in this uh in this nba i mean this team could be sneaky deep could be a, a sneaky, you know, a couple of these players break out, take their games to the next level around a core group of veterans. I think we could see the San Antonio Spurs sneak their way in, into the playoffs and not via the play in if things are kind of working I, out. Yeah. Where, where's your sort of ceiling for the Spurs next year in terms of uh, even if they don't get a big swing like Laurie Markin and Brandon Ingram, one of these, but one of these minor moves like a Gary or a Tyus Jones or one of these pieces. Yeah, Ben, even where they sit right now, in the last video prior to the moves they made with Harrison Barnes, I thought they were going to sneak in as in a in the uh the, the play in tournament around like the eight, nine, ten seed. I think they've surpassed that now with all of these players. If they even if they make one of these moves, I think they solidify themselves in the top six with either Gary Trent or potentially Tyus Jones as well, too. But I think I would be I think it's a safe bet to say they slide into the six or five, even five seed. So I'm very optimistic. I think the Spurs roster is gonna be great next year. Yeah, well, you got one B averaging four blocks a game yeah. as, a, as a rookie. That's just that's just on another level. But folks, let's know what you guys think in the comment section down below. It gets the best to make it this far. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you did make it this far on this video. Lots of NBA content coming. So, Jack, any last words in the old San Antonio Spurs? I think the Spurs are finessing the NBA right now, and we'll see what they keep doing. For sure. Cheers.